Hey guys, Morgan here, and today we have a fun episode lined up. Today we're going to meet Chris Parker, who runs the YouTube channel called Retired Working For You. I've been watching his content for more than two years. I've watched probably 80% of his episodes. I love them. They are great. They're fun. They are educational. And if you're interested in coming to Thailand or trying to maximize your trip here, I think it's the best resource on YouTube. And here's a cool thing. So if you're looking to be a tourist or if you're looking to settle down here as a Westerner, you can use his videos as a very strong resource for navigating the place. He goes through everything that there is to do in Bangkok, the islands, what to do when you're um, moving here, what to think about before you come here and so much more. I highly recommend that you check out his channel, but since he's about to arrive, I'm gonna go down and meet him so you just sit right put and then we'll go and meet him. Okay, let's go. Okay. Hi, Chris. Thank you for coming. Yeah, man. Nice to be here. It's good to finally meet you. Yeah, you too. This has been, uh, I don't know if it's called, correct to call it a dream of mine, but ever since I saw your <laughs> channel, I was like, this channel is awesome and uh, I want to meet you. Nice. Well, yeah. here we are. Here we are. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, so I've been a follower of yours because I've been interested in Thailand for a long, long time. I started coming to Thailand more than 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. This, I think this is my 12th time. I'm oh, not exactly wow. sure on the counting. So, so it's only a matter of time till you're living here, <laughs> man. That's how it goes. I can really visualize myself living in this country, mm -hmm. uh, at least for several months of the year. Now that I'm living as a digital nomad, I run a company here in Norway. Well, here in Norway, that's not how to say it. Uh, in Norway, but the work is remote. So I can be anywhere. And then the question becomes, what about Thailand? Yeah. Bangkok is a crazy place. So much opportunity. And you've been here for some time. And uh, I've been looking at your videos on the, on the Thonglor area, the Ekamai region. And I wanted to speak to you a little bit about like what made you choose Bangkok and how do you think about it as a base for digital nomads for some months of the year? Yeah, so the reason I chose Bangkok's a little bit kind of backwards. I moved here when my daughter still had a couple of years of high school left. Um, we were always going to just wait until she finished high school, the classic line that a lot of parents use. Yeah. And when she's finished high school, we'll move to Thailand. And then one day we said, you know what, it's, it'll be good for her. Yeah. to uh, experience life in a foreign country. So, you know, our, our kind of base in Thailand's always been Samui. I got a lot of lifelong buddies there. Yeah. We probably would have moved there, except for the fact that the schools, the international schools at that age, the final couple of years of high school, aren't quite there yet. They're just building that out in Samui. Uh. And so that's why we chose Bangkok. And I hadn't had a ton of experience. I, like you, I'd been coming to Thailand since 94, mm. 20 straight years, but always uh, just kind of skipped in and out of Bangkok because it was a vacation. So we didn't know what to expect. Yeah. And so we moved here and actually fell in love with the city. Yeah. You know, this is a city that's got everything in spades, man. Like great food, great nightlife, Believe it or not, amazing parks. Uh, you know, some green space that you can uh, really enjoy. I do that every single day. And it's just vibrant. You know, the vibrancy here is like no place I've ever been on earth. When you leave Bangkok, most other places seem a bit boring. <laughs> I agree with that. This is a very busy place. If you come from Norway, here <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> it's such a it's such a wild difference but i mean i've been in khao san road as an example mm -hmm. that that is a buzzing place i think this place right here right right now we're in Thonglor, and uh this feels more quiet to me and this still is a buzzing place like the, it's funny oh, 100%. It, it's funny you say that because you know, when we had moved to Bangkok, like I said, even with all the experience coming to Thailand, such limited experience, we hadn't actually spent a night in Bangkok in, in the previous 20 years. And when we did that, we were younger and we spent a couple of nights in Khao San Road. Yeah. And I think a lot of people do this. They picture Bangkok as Khao San Road, 
<laughs> um, or maybe Nana Plaza or, or Soy Cowboy, and they think like that's what the whole city must be like. Yeah. And you know, I've been living here five years. I probably go to Cow San Road no more than once a year. Yeah. You know, like that is just not what Bangkok generally is. It's, it's, yeah, it's wild, it's crazy, it's great for tourists. Yeah. But if you're debating living here, and your only experience has been on Khao San Road, that might turn you off a little bit and think like, I don't want to live in a place like this. I love to come and party in a place like this. But then come on over here to Tonglor, to, to anywhere on the Sukhumvit line. It's vibrant, but it's got a bit more of a local vibe. Yeah. Tons of expats here, less tourists, more expat. And then you could take it a step further, which I have a lot of friends and live in, in one of the quieter neighborhoods. Yeah. You go another five SkyTrain stops this way and you live cheaper, quieter, that more local Thai vibe. Mm. And you start to weed out a lot of the foreign population, which some people love. Yeah. I mean, if you wanted to give some advice to someone who's coming here with the purpose of staying here for, let's say, a year to begin with, um, and like you, I remember in one of your videos, you were talking about many districts in Bangkok. Like, what are the criteria that people should be thinking about when choosing a location? I think first and foremost, you got to decide what your happy place is. Do you want to be kind of in the middle of uh, the really, really busy, busy ba version of Bangkok? Um, or do you want something that's a little bit quieter? You know, there's some, some people go down each of those paths. Yeah. I got friends who want to be right in the action and I got friends who want nothing to do with that and they want, you know, a bit of a more peaceful life. So I would start to decide that first and then you got to decide, do you want to be in a part of town that has a lot of other expats? Yeah. Or do you want to be in a town where you're more immersed in local Thai culture? because Bangkok has both of those sides. Mm -hmm. And so once you decide those two things, then you can start to kind of hone in and shop around because there's several neighborhoods that fit, that fit both of those paths. Yeah. The, the series that you made made me consider Ekamai and Thonglor. And I remember in that series, you talk about those two being very similar, similar vibes. Do you have a preference for one of those two yourself? And if so, what would that be? When I first moved here, I, I would have said Ekamai, but now I'd say Tonglor, but I, I, I personally put those two in the same category. Yeah, these are two roads that are parallel to each other, right? Like, yeah, two roads that are parallel. They're only one stop away from each other. In essence, it's the same part of Bangkok yeah. with very similar vibes. Tonglor yeah. maybe has a bit more action mm. than Ekamai, but they both have great restaurants, great nightlife, you know, great coffee shops, great for young digital nomads for sure, either of those areas. But that but they're the same category. Yeah. You know, you kind of gotta section it off. That's like and they're those these are both relatively high end parts of Bangkok. Yeah. So they cost a little bit more, you know relative to the rest of Thailand, but still Relative to lots of places in Bangkok. Yeah. It's still cheap compared to the rest of the world. Exactly. But relative to other neighborhoods in Bangkok, yeah. you know, they, they are expensive. But they, if you're a digital nomad making international dollars, then everything might, that might is going to okay. seem cheap <laughs> for you here. Yeah. You know, but I have to say, like, I feel like things have gotten more expensive since, since I started to come here. Oh, yeah. The pork on a stick's gone from 10 baht to 12 baht, which might <laughs> seem funny because that's literally 25 cents to, to 30 cents. Yeah. But that's a 20% increase. It is. And, you know, for, for if you just apply that across the board, yeah. then it's not quite so funny no. as the pork on a stick example. <laughs> As far as cost goes, so I mean, it's like it's, Bangkok's the ultimate version of how long is a piece of string. Yeah, for you sure. Know, I, yeah. I have a lot of friends who live here on, I'd say, 1,500 US dollars a month. Wow. You know, 50,000 baht, yeah. all in, a yeah. lot. And I know a lot of people who go that route. And then yeah. I have some people who are clocking uh, great international dollars who are spending, you know, eight, 10 grand a month. Yeah. And everywhere in between, because you can choose. 
do you want to go eat a meal for under two bucks? It's mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. Do you want to enjoy some nice Argentinian steak for, <laughs> you know, and go drop 80 bucks? Yeah. That type of stuff's everywhere too. Yeah. You know, do you want some mid-level Japanese, Korean, Indian food for 15 bucks? Yeah. That's everywhere too. So you, you can really kind of... You have the whole range. Yeah. yeah, you have the whole range. My favorite thing though is like, I come from Toronto, the city's ballooned in price. Everything's crazy expensive yeah. there now. You also got to add taxes and big giant tips and, and all kinds of stuff. And, and it's the type of place where for my budget on my life, you'd have to think about whether you say yes or no when friends invite you out. Hey, we're going out, let's do it. Yeah. You, might, you couldn't just say yes without thinking about it. How many times did I go out last week or last month? Thailand, you just, do you want to do it or not? Exactly. Because everything's reasonably priced. Even the right. high-end stuff feels super valued, valuable because it's less than high-end stuff in the West. I completely agree with that. That has been my experience too. And like, I was blown away by how many Japanese restaurants are here. Yeah. Like this seems to be like a Japanese part of Bangkok. E Ekama and Tonglor, heavily Japanese influenced. Yeah. Japanese are the number one uh, expat community here. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. and 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 th this we're in the heart of it right here. Uh, yeah. uh, this and Akamai next door. Had I known that, I wouldn't have come from Osaka. I wouldn't have started in Osaka because <laughs> I've just <laughs> been two weeks in Osaka, eating my like to my biggest delight, and and uh, I'm kind of like I want to eat something else. But there's so much Thai food here too. That's amazing. Oh yeah. I went to this restaurant that's actually part of this building. Was it called Bon Bon, bon Ice? Ice? Oh, I was there last oh, month. Oh my god. Yeah, that's god. a good place. It's so tasty. Yeah. And the prices there are very affordable. Very, and that's mid level. Yeah. Like that's that's nice. You you, go, you can go there for drinks and dinner. Yeah. And that, you know that's that's not uh, that's not considered cheap here in Thailand but it feels like it when you're flying in from Osaka or Norway yeah for sure the Japanese yen has come down a lot so Japan is now more reasonable to visit yeah but uh compared to Norway oh my god like my budget like I'm I come from a small city outside of Oslo about an hour south so our prices are about half of what they are in Oslo my cost of living in Norway is about three thousand dollars per month mm -hmm. um so, I mean, here with $3,000, if I wanted to maintain that, my God, you can oh, have yeah. a good time. Yeah, have a great time. So speaking of food, um, the Thai cuisine has many regions, right? And yeah. there are, there's a lot of things to explore. What are some of your favorite Thai dishes? Um, I love, uh, well, there's a lot, but I love food up in the north, yeah. north, northern Thai food. It's a little bit less spicy generally. Okay. A lot of Thai food has a kick, like cow soy, cow soy. noodles. I tried that for the first time three days ago. Oh, really? Wow, yeah. Yeah, where did you go? There's uh, like like 50 meters away. Like there's a, oh, there's okay. a shop on here on Thonglor. Yeah, on like this street. Yeah. The best cow soy in Bangkok's over in Ekamai, just, uh, oh, really? just the next neighborhood called oh. Hamduan. Hummed one. I'm Hummed gonna to have to one. get the the Google pin after. Yeah, yeah, it's it's amazing. I love northern Thai food from from you know um, cow soy, gang hung le, this pork curry they they do. They got the green chili paste, all that stuff. I mm. love it when I go up north. Eaton's amazing. Amazing. Um, you know, I I like. Uh, a lot of the, the, the standard kind of Thai fare, the, the cow camu, the stewed pork leg yeah. over rice. Yeah. Uh, I love that. Pad krapao. I call that the Thai hamburger. Yeah. You could eat that every day. Thai hamburger. It's I like just that. minced pork with chilies and, and holy basil on a, on a, usually on a bed of rice. Yeah. And that is very much the Thai hamburger, man. That's, <laughs> that's easy. I had that for the first time as well for like a few, like maybe a week ago. Yeah. I went to, there's another place that you recommended, uh, the commons. Yeah. The commons. I found, I found, a I found a place that sold that and I went for it. The oh. Thai hamburger. I'm going to remember that. Oh that's, yeah. <laughs> that was really, really good. Yeah. And then down South, it's like, it's a lot of curries, a lot of really spicy curries. Southern yeah. food wouldn't be my favorite. Um, 
but I like I like I like some of it, just not all of it. Yeah. Um, but I do like a lot of the traditional curries, masa man, green awesome. curry, yeah. all that. There's you know there's the, the, the list is endless here. There's it one is. of the greatest cuisines on earth. Yeah. You know nobody would argue that worldwide. And and when you get here, the best thing is enjoying it from local spots. Yeah. Like there's a lot of high end places here. The small stalls on the streets. Yeah, the, yeah, Michelin starred Thai food. I tend to shy away from that because it's just yeah. a bit of a watered down version. I want some old lady cooking <laughs> over a dirty wok, man. Yeah, I like I like that too. The yeah. street food vibe yeah. is so much cooler. I have to be mindful of those little plastic chairs, though. I feel like they're gonna uh, <laughs> crumble give way on you. It can I, happen. It yeah. can happen. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> makes me nervous. Yeah. But I mean, oh man, it's so cool. Now, you've mentioned the north. You've mentioned um, Koh Samui. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the regions that digital nomads uh, should check out for, yeah. um, for, for, like, for the purpose of having a base? Yeah, I think um, the, the list is pretty clear cut. It's Bangkok. Then you got Chiang Mai in the north, which is digital nomad central. Yeah. You know, you throw a stone in Bangkok, you're hitting a digital nomad. I think that's the capital for nomads in the world. Like it's right up there, if not number one, number two. Yeah. And then you got, uh, if you if you want the islands, mm -hmm. you really got two two main choices: yeah. Phuket or Samui. Yeah. Phuket is more of a city, an island city. Yeah. Samui is more of an island vibe yeah and then Samui has an offshoot Copangan, which is where the a lot of digital nomads are these days down yeah. there what do you think they choose to be there in Copangan? yeah um that's a good question i don't know how that took off i guess jesus i, I guess it's it's a bit of a like a bit of a wellness vibe to it down yeah. there yeah so i guess uh yeah, I really like yoga retreats, and yoga retreats, you know, a lot of eating. outdoorsy yeah. type of people. And then it, it it probably just started to kind of gain traction the same way Chiang Mai did for whatever reason. And then once word of mouth started getting around with yeah. nomads and then some infrastructure popped up to support it, co-working centers and this sort of stuff, it probably just snow, snowballed from there. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And then you have... The other options would be Pattaya and yeah. Hua Hin. Yeah. Pattaya is like if, if you know, that, that to me is my least favorite personally. Hmm. That's like the capital of, you know, the capital of sex tourism for Thailand. Yeah, I've heard. Um, but there's other sides to it. It seems very affordable there. Like yeah. the prices seem to be low in Pattaya. I've never been there. But okay, yeah, yeah, definitely more affordable than the others we mentioned, ex except Chiang Mai. Chiang Mai is very affordable. Yeah. Much cheaper to live in Chiang Mai than Phuket or Samui. Yeah. Um, Bangkok's even cheaper, I find, than Phuket or Samui. Yeah. Because, because it, the, there's a local economy available here. Yeah. Phuket, Samui, you're, you're in a tourist economy. Mm. So it's harder to find good, cheap local stuff. Um, and then the other option is going off grid rural. You know, I got friends who just, who just wanted a more rural life. That's what they like. And that's when it gets crazy cheap, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and then the other one down is Hua Hin, which I call the Florida of yeah. Thailand. It's, it's, <laughs> it's super nice, peaceful, right on the seaside, a lot of gated communities. It's a little too calm and peaceful for me. Yeah. But if that's your thing, then you'd love it in Hua Hin. I remember I went there the first time I went to Thailand. So that's 15 years ago. So uh -huh. I'm sure it's changed since that since then. But when I was there, I remember seeing only seniors. <laughs> oh yeah. It's Florida. Yeah, exactly. It's Florida, man. I can remember that. Yeah, but now there's 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 more to it now and and a lot of people love it. A mm. lot of people love it. And that's the thing about Thailand. It's got something for everyone. Yeah. You know, my my three personal spots are out of the major spots other than side trips bangkok chiang mai samui that's my favorite spots yeah i got buddies who would would say phuket over samui every day i'm the opposite this is the beauty of thailand different strokes for different folks and and this country offers something for everyone in mm -hmm. my opinion 
One of the coolest things I think about Thailand as a base is that you're connected to everywhere, like fly, fly, flight wise. It's so like, is there another place in the world that has more flights connected with direct flights? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's like amazing. You can go anywhere. Yeah, it, 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 I went uh, just two weekends ago, I went to Phnom Penh, 40, yeah. 45 minute flight. Yeah. 100 bucks return. Crazy. You know, for 100 bucks and an hour, your options are Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, parts of Malaysia, you know, and then if you expand it to three hours, I had a three and a half hour flight, I was hiking in a mountain in Nepal, you know, and then, so yeah, and it's cheap, local travel's cheap, uh, airfares are cheap, quick to get places, I, I love that about Bangkok in particular. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm about to move to Koh Samui, and that's one of the major downsides. I was talking about that with my wife just yesterday. It's like, man, now if we want to go anywhere, we got to go back to the world of stopover in Bangkok. <laughs> and there's just something magical. Oh, no. <laughs> well, but there's something magical about a one-hour flight. Oh, 100%. Versus a half a day or a day, especially yeah. if you want to go somewhere for a few days. Yeah. You know, I, I, I went to Phnom Penh for the weekend. Yeah. Me and a buddy went over 45 minutes. That's a bus ride where I'm from. I haven't planned that city on my route this time. Do you think that's a mistake? Should I put it in? Phnom Penh? Yeah. As what? A viable place to live? For a digital nomad for one to three months in a year. I guess so. I, 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 that was my first time there. I liked it. I, I was expecting it to be more like... Bangkok, mm. just a little smaller. Yeah. But what I realized was it was more like, felt more like Chiang Mai, oh. but bigger. Like oh. it's nowhere near what Bangkok is in size like and, city. and crazy busyness and in, in vibrance. It had more of a Chiang Mai vibe, but bigger. It's like half, if Bangkok and Chiang Mai had a baby, it'd come out <laughs> looking like Phnom Penh. Really? You know, and. Uh, Quite a visual. <laughs> <laughs> It, it was cool. It was it was cool, but I I don't. For me, there's a big difference between a place I'd visit and a place that I want to live. Like the, yeah. I I've always said, I I could recommend lots of places in Southeast Asia that I think would make for a potentially better vacation than Thailand. Yeah. But none that I'd rather live in. I completely understand what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just different. You go somewhere, you, sometimes you want to be a little bit more off the beaten track, a little bit more of a, of a, of a unique vibe. Yeah. And, and then that's great for vacation, but I'm, I'm going to be living here for decades, man. I, I like, I like, I like uh, the best of both worlds yeah. when it comes to that. They have a, a bunch of different visas here where you can stay longer especially once you pass 50 when you're under 50 you have fewer options but i still think it's pretty good i see that they're uh, imp implementing a new visa now called the uh, the destination thailand visa dtv the dtv can yeah. you talk a little bit about that yeah so it, as of the time we're talking it's, yeah it's not it's not in effect yet mm. um as of the time that people are going to be uh watching this it might be in effect thing about Thailand visas, yeah. always go in and make sure that what you're hearing is actually what you're going to get. Yeah. Um, because that there's always a delay between when it's in the newspaper here and when it actually becomes uh, real life. So yeah, they've, they've just an, announced that. There was some news out this week that it, it's looking like it's going to be implemented in, quite soon, a couple of months. And it's, it sounds amazing. It's yeah. going to be a five-year visa for 10,000 baht would be the cost, they're saying. So that's about two, uh, 300, 300 bucks US. Yeah. And it gets you 180 days consecutive on the ground in Thailand. And then you could renew it up to once from within the kingdom. So you could stay on it up to a year. This is the, the fine print that I'm really curious about. Yeah. But it sounds like it's 180 days on the ground and then you have to leave. And when you come back, you can get another 180 day period 
over the whole five years over and over and over again yeah but if you if you want to renew it from within thailand without leaving you can only do that once and they want another ten thousand baht mm. for that i don't know if they're going to want ten thousand baht every time you get your next 180 days say you live here for four or five months yeah you go somewhere else yeah then you come back a few months later you want to stay for another four or five months i don't know if they're going to want another ten thousand baht for that yeah but irregardless, it's a great price. Seems like a very good price. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's really the visa I think nomads have been waiting for, it, unless you want to live here 12 months of the year. Yeah, or, it cuts or, out the visa runs, sort of. Cuts out the visa runs, and visa runs are, yeah, it, it cuts out the visa runs um, for... Because that's, uh, I think there's a lot of people, correct me if I'm wrong, I think there's a lot of people that are here as the digital nomads that are here on a tourist visa and they're doing the visa runs, right? Do, yes. Can you explain a little bit what that means? Uh, well, to the basically, that generally you get 30 to 60 days tourist yeah. visa on arrival. You can apply for 60 from your home country. The other thing they mentioned last week is they're, they're about to say 60 across the board, yeah. which will be great. So you're here for, you want to stay for six months after 59 days yeah. you have to leave the country because your visa expires go to the border yeah. go to the border and come back but like there's they're they're starting to ask more questions about that now than they ever have before yeah so it's it, it's not just a pain in the ass which it is <laughs> you know because it comes at uh, murphy's law sometimes the worst time Mm. And, but it's also stressful because you do it a few times and they're going to start to ask you some questions. What are you really doing there? Yeah. That's why this new DTV visa, man, it's, it's for people that just want to kind of be actually nomadic and not set up a, a, a life here, a 12 month a year life. This thing sounds magical to me. I hope it goes through. Yeah. Because they also have the LTR visa, right? Yeah, talk about that a little bit. What does that mean? So that's long-term resident broken down into four categories from wealthy global citizens to wealthy pensioners, a lot of old rich retirees, but there's one called highly skilled workers and remote workers. Yeah. Thing about that is that if you want to get the remote worker uh, version of that, and this is a 10 year visa. 10 year. Uh, and it's for people who want to live, live here. Mm -hmm. Gives you 17, ability to pay only 17% flat income tax. That sounds attractive. Yeah, and... Um, Paying gives, over 30 now. So. Yeah, it gives you lots of benefits, <laughs> including that. Um, but the, the, the one catch to it was for the remote worker category, you have to be working for a company that does over 150 million a year in revenue. So and it's for the people that yet. <laughs> yeah, and and most people's don't. It's for the people yeah. working at Twitter or Facebook Apple or, or Apple or lots of companies, but not the bulk of what make up the digital nomads that yeah. you and I think of when we think digital nomads. Yeah. So that was a catch that people thought, well, who, that visa doesn't yeah. capture the actual nomads, and so the DTV visa kind of plugs that hole. Yeah. But that LTR visa, if you do want it, so I, I would look at it this way. If I want to live here no more than six months of the year, no brainer, DTV visa as soon as it's available, yeah. incredible option. If I want to live here 12 months of the year, I would look for a way to get a uh, LTR visa. LTR visa. And it's Thailand. So mm -hmm. there's ways to make um, lots of stuff happen. It mm -hmm. might not be easy. I see too many people who let small obstacles kind of prevent them from, I guess, living the life they want to live. Yeah, I see that all the time with the people I connect with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's like, okay, so uh, this LTR thing, I get it. You don't work for a $150 million company. Well, I know lots of agencies out there who know how the system works exactly and, the, and, and um, will solve that problem yeah. for you. So there you know, are agencies in Thailand that can help you get set up if you want to. To do the LTR visa, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm. That might be a good viable option for a lot of nomads who want to stay here longer, I guess. Oh, yeah, it would be. It'd be yeah. a great option. I got a buddy who um, who lives in Samui. He's from Denmark, and he got a LTR visa. Yeah. And 
you know, he was working for a Danish company, doing a lot of business in China. He's not even a remote entrepreneur. He has a job where he works for a Danish company, a lot of business trips because their suppliers are in China. And he convinced his Danish company, he said, I, wanted, I can do my job from Koh Samui. And it took them a year to convince them. <laughs> the one big thing they said is, you, you're going to have to prove you're paying tax there. And uh, so he said, great, I get an LTR fees. I go from 50% to 17. I make my Danish money, live in Thailand. <laughs> so sexy. Amazing. Amazing. It's like tripling or 5xing your income. Yeah, you, you would have to make, yeah, triple your money yeah. back home. Yeah. It would be the equivalent of... That was what attracted me to Thailand to begin with. I remember reading The 4-Hour Work Week. I don't know if you know that book. Tim, good old Tim. Ferriss. Tim. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That was such a mind shift for me when you realize the geo-arbitrage that you can do working in a Western country, getting a salary there, but living where the expenses are lower. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Yeah. I, I don't understand how, like, after doing it, and I, I, I'm, I look at it more from now I'm an old retired dude right so i look at it through that lens more so than the the young digital nomad lens but either way you cut it for me it even as a retired person yeah it's like you got how much x dollars per month no matter what that number is yeah. unless you have you know ridiculous ridiculous money for 99 percent of the people no matter what that number is yeah my life here is night and day different between what my life back in Canada would be if I decided to live in Europe or America yeah. for my retirement. So yeah, that, that part of it's a no brainer. <laughs> yeah. The weather, like, so your country and mine have a similar winterish cold oh. climate. Yeah. And, uh, that's an understatement. <laughs> we get six months the... of winter. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get the same darkness that we do? No, not as bad. But it, get, it like it gets dark at four thirty, five p.m. Yeah. So yeah. So you get a milder version, but still, it sucks in winter. <laughs> oh, it sucks. Yeah. So speaking of the weather, now it's rainy season. Although since I got here, I haven't seen a drop of rain. Yeah. Uh, I've been here for maybe a week now. Uh huh. That was, that was unexpected. Like I, I was expecting it to be much more rain. Um, if you could select. Like if you were to advise someone who wants to come here for, let's say, three months or six, which months would you say that they should come if they haven't been here before? It, it does partially depend on where they're going. Okay. Because the rainy season is different in Samui versus mm. Bangkok versus uh, Phuket. Samui's rainy season is October till Christmas. Okay. So if you were coming from October till Christmas and you wanted to go to Samui, you might not want to choose that time. You might want to go January to April. Yeah. And then, you know, same deal. Chiang Mai has burning season. Yeah. February to June. You, if, you, if, you, if you're coming to spend those three months in Chiang Mai, you definitely don't want to go then. Yeah. I would say for me, my favorite is October until December. Yeah. Because it's for most of the country outside Samui, it's right at the end of rainy season. Mm. If you go up to Chiang Mai during those months, you will want to live there <laughs> because it is like I hate the winter, yeah. but I also hate hot season in Bangkok, man. Yeah. I got to say, you know, <laughs> I prefer hot season in Bangkok over winter, but I don't like it. I don't like hot season <laughs> here. You go to Chiang Mai November, December. Every morning you wake up, it's 17 degrees. Nice. And, you know, no humidity. Yeah. And then the max is 30. Yeah. It's like LA weather. It's perfect it's every perfect. day. Yeah. From, and so those months up there are the best. And I would avoid Bangkok in hot season from mid February till um, mid June. Yeah. The, the air gets a lot more polluted. The, it's just, it's, uh, it's hot. Right. So your general advice is, depending on when you come, you want to select a different location, more yeah. or less, unless you go for something specific. Yeah, unless, you're, unless your location's already locked, yeah. then, then make sure you're going at the right time. Generally, like 
don't come during hot season. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I used to live in Dubai for eight years. Oh, yeah. And I can remember seeing 50 degrees. Oh, that's crazy. It is so hot. I remember the sandals. I went to the swimming pool just for an hour, but the swimming pool was like 30 degrees. Couldn't get cool down there either. Yeah. Coming back, I leave my sandals outside the door as I go in to take a shower. I forget that they're out there. The next day, the glue in between the sandal layers had melted oh my God. and my sandals were destroyed. Yeah. Like 24 hours in the sun. Well, you'll be fine <laughs> here in hot season then. Uh, I think I would be okay, but still it's hot. You turn on the heater, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's- God no bless the guy who invented AC. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. He should have more than one metal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Especially in this country or Dubai. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's tough. So, I mean, um, if you wanted to break up the trip, for, let's say you wanted to hit three locations, one month, one month, one month. As like a scouting mission? Yeah. Yeah, for me, it would be a no-brainer, Bangkok, Chiang Mai, Samui. Mm -hmm. uh, those are, because those are just my three favorite places. Yeah. So, and that gives you a, a sense as to the big, big city, the small city, northern life vibes, um, but still a city, and then island life. But if you know you want island life, then go Samui for a month, Phuket for a month, Koh Phangan for a month. Yeah. If you know you want that. Yeah. You know, it's like if you know you want the city life, then go Bangkok. Hua Hin, Chiang Mai, maybe Pattaya. Yeah. You know, so uh, it, 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 that's where I go back to where we started. It, you just kind of, if there's uh, something that you know is your happy place, start there. Yeah. But if you don't, if you're thinking, I don't know, city, mountains, beach, that's where I say Bangkok City, Chiang Mai Mountains, Samui Beach. Yeah. I'm thinking of applying either for the DTV. Yeah. or to get the Thai elite visa. If you don't mind, I'd like to touch a little bit on the Thai elite visa too, because that's another interesting one if you have a little bit of cash. Yeah, I have some friends with that. Yeah. I'm actually talking to them next week, the president of that, the Thai elite visa oh, program. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I'll be yeah. watching that episode. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to interview them and just get their take on why, why people do it. That's so cool. But I do have friends who are on that. Yeah. If you got the money, it's great. Yeah, because it's about, I think for the five year now, so it's a long-term visa. Yeah. Uh, five, 10 or 20 maybe? Something like that. Yeah, five, 10, 15, 20. I think I'm a little, yeah, I think it's like something like that. And then I think for the five year, the lowest one, it's at $25,000 roughly. And then you get access. Isn't that right? Something like that? So it sounds sounds right. I don't, I'm not super sure on the current prices. They all went up a few they did. months ago or six months ago. Yeah. I got a buddy who got a great, well, during COVID, they were given crazy deals on that. My one buddy yeah. did the math. He got the 20 year wow. for the price of what I think a five year is now. Yeah. And he's like, that's going to be as cheap as just doing visas. The one, like, it seems yeah. like they're, they, they feel crazy expensive when you look at the price tag. As a one-off fee up front. Yeah. But then you do the math on it. Yep. And if you know that you're going to live here for that, those number of years, like yeah. getting your visa here costs money. I did the numbers on it recently. So I believe the price is approximately $25,000. And if you average that over each month for five years that's like 400 bucks a month yeah and if i think about how much i'm going to save in terms of cost of living living in let's say norway i mean i'm going to make that money back no brainer yeah 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 so but but twenty five thousand dollars up front not everybody has that no exactly and that's where the the, the good news about this dtv visa is the, the ltr visa that got launched like just a year and a half ago is also another of uh, that. The, the elite visa used to be the only kind of option for that, that category of people. And so that they've, they've, they ha they do have some other options now, Yeah, which is nice. Yeah. That program, the people I know that are on it, love it. It's yeah. one of those things, man, you yeah. got the money and can afford it. And you know, you want to live in Thailand. It's an awesome option. 
if Thailand fell in the sea, if you couldn't live in Thailand anymore, oh, what? Oh, yeah, what a terrible thing, yeah. <laughs> terrible question. No, but like, what? <clears throat> what other locations would you be considering? Wow, I'd have to go on a scouting mission, yeah. and 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 I would say because you like the island. I but. like the island, I like the city, I like Chiang Mai, yeah. I love Thailand, I love... So you the, like optionality then? Yeah, yeah. I like I like, op I like what Thailand has, I love the people here. Yeah. But that aside, we're saying it fell into the sea, or more realistically, I always, I've, every few months, I, I'm, I find myself laying in bed at night getting scared, like what if things change here? Yeah. What if this place goes and changes and turns into like the stuff I don't want, like like that's going on back in in my home country yeah where this uh you know feeling a true freedom starts to get constricted anyway yeah. if that happened i honestly don't know at that time i would go and scout a few countries i would consider looking at countries in the region yeah malaysia vietnam yeah. philippines maybe yeah yeah um uh, yeah, I would consider that. I hope it doesn't come to that. No, like no, that's no. question through me for a little. It would be. It would, yeah, it would be more me. like for a digital nomad who are considering other places. But yeah, well, I I, 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 there, there's a lot of digital nomads who would consider any of these places, and not only consider do it like um, all the ones you just mentioned, Vietnam. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people would choose that. Philippines, mm. Indonesia, Bali. For me. Like those places, I've never been to Bali. I don't have any desire to, to go there. I, I don't need to ever step foot on Bali as long as I live from the stories I hear. I was there. It wasn't for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of people love it. Yeah. And that's the thing, man. Like it's, yeah. a, it's a beautiful big world full of beautiful, diverse people who all like their own shit. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of places for all of us. Thailand's my place because yeah. it's the balance of international and local. Cheap, good local stuff, great local cuisine, but also good international cuisine when yeah. I got that craving. Yeah. You know, islands, beaches, mountains. Well, access to everything here. Yeah, for me. Yeah. And then the people you can't, you, I, you, know, you can't beat them. Let's touch a little bit about the other side of the coin because everywhere you go there's going to be upside and there's going to be downside now thailand clearly has a lot of pluses and we've touched on a lot of them like uh you can get here like it's easy to get here it's affordable here they have everything here clearly this is an amazing place but every place has some drawbacks what are the some of the cons would you say of living here for me the heat yeah. As much as I hate winter, the heat is a drawback. I will probably look to leave Thailand during hot seasons. Yeah. Um, in the future, maybe go up to Korea where my wife's from, mm. uh, which is beautiful over there. And good food. Yeah, my, oh my favorite God. food. That's number <laughs> one for me. Yeah. For food in the world yeah. by far. But, and it's perfect time of year, hot season here, spring, spring time over there. Yeah. The heat's a big drawback. Bangkok, pollution yeah. is a big drawback. Pollution. The one thing I'm not looking, and traffic. Traffic. Pollu yeah. Pollution is the one thing I'm really looking forward to not having in my life when I move to Samui, particularly during, yeah, I call it pollution season here. Yeah. It starts in about January. And it does, it's not every day, all day. It comes and goes in waves for like a four month period. Yeah. But when it's bad, yeah. you shouldn't go outside, they tell you. And you look out your window in the morning and, and you can see you're like, today's one of those days. I'm not going to walk in the park this morning. Yeah. Because it's just, and, and I think to myself, eh, I, I'm, I don't need to, uh, I'm getting older, so I, I'll trade fresh air and maybe lose some of that vibrance and, and you know, great stuff about the city yeah. as a trade off. So for me, it's really heat pollution. Um, 
I had an and then sometimes over tourism can be a bit of a over tourism that, yeah. that can be a bit of a negative yeah but you can when you live here you just navigate your way around that like I'm gonna move into Koh Samui I'll go to Chuang Beach maybe one time each year the yeah. same as Khao San Road here yeah exactly like Khao San Road's here and that's the epitome of over tourism and just not the Thailand experience that I want in my daily life. Mm -hmm. So I just don't go there. I remember watching one of your videos uh, and I remember you said, I don't mind paying the Farang price or something like that. Cause that's yeah. something that they do here. The double pricing, dual pricing. They have an extra fee for you if yeah. you're not a local. Mm -hmm. And I think you said like, I don't mind, like let's just have a good time with it. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people will take offense to the fact that you have to pay extra. Oh, they get bent out of shape, man. Yeah. They get crazy. They get mad at me for even saying I don't mind. Yeah. Uh, they, they, I, they, I, it doesn't, it's not everything. It's not like this is specific things, right? Like visiting a temple, going to a national park, park yeah. entrance fees. It's not like you go into a restaurant and there's two prices. Every 99% of the things you do, you pay what the Thais pay. But if I want to go to a national park, maybe they pay 50 baht to get in and I pay 200. Yeah. And some people, they, that's, that's cause to get nuts on Twitter for sure. Yeah. And for me, I'm like, okay, so the only other option is shut 80% of Thais out of their own national parks. Yeah. Because they're trying to balance a bunch of people out who have some money and the parks need to uh, sustain themselves versus, okay, now Thai people can't afford it because we let so many tourists in. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's the flip side of that coin is if you're against dual pricing, then you're saying don't let uh, lower class Thai people enjoy their own country and parks and temples. Mm -hmm. And I would challenge anyone who bitches and complains about dual pricing to say, look, great, let's do a new rules for you. Single pricing, and now you make the average Thai salary. All good? <laughs> You're happy now? Is that what you wanted? Like, that's that's tough. Up. Like, it's just, it's so, it's just crazy to me. Yeah. What about tipping culture? There are some things here, like, I, I, I'm like you. I don't mind paying the price. Uh, but there are sometimes I'm asked for extra tips that rub me the wrong way. As an example, one of your videos, you talk about going to the dentist. I did that three days ago. I had a great time. Service was great. But as I was leaving, the lady that was just handling the paperwork asked me for a tip. Really? Yes. That's wild. That was weird to me. That's that bizarre. seemed like, okay, you're not a street vendor. You're not a taxi driver. <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, well, they don't even ask for tips. That was so strange to me, man. That's it's crazy. It's not just me, right? That was weird. That's bizarre, dude. Yeah. She That's... wanted like 200 baht. Huh? She wanted 200 baht. That's bizarre. Yeah. yeah I've never, for me, she said. I've never heard of that. No. That yeah, was... for me, the way I look at tipping here, and I come, I think Europe's a lot uh, saner than Canada. Canada mm. tips 20% now for, for the average tip. 18 to 20. That's crazy. Yeah. When you get a bill in Canada and use your debit card, there's three buttons to push. 18, 20, 23. No So 18 way. makes you feel cheap. What? Nuts. Yeah. So over here, there's no tipping if you don't want a tip and no one's going to get bent out of shape about it. Like they don't expect tips here. Yeah. Um, you know, I just employ a per Some restaurants here will add a 10% service charge. A lot of them in this neighborhood in Sukhumvit, 10% service charge. If that's on my bill, I won't leave a tip, zero. Yeah. Uh, if that's not on my bill, I'll usually leave five to 10%. Yeah. If I get a food panda delivery for food up to my house, I give them 20 baht. That's my standard. I don't care how much a meal costs because yeah. most people won't tip them at all. And they don't care. They, they don't want it, but I'll give them 20 baht. It's like, 50 cents and the guy's going to be able to have a beer tonight maybe no. you know so <clears throat> yeah that's 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 the way i look at it it's just uh sometimes it's like you think you get you get too caught up and it would depend on your personal situation you get too caught up in are they trying to rip me off or this or that versus 
this dollar is going to mean more to them than it is to me and yeah. they put they 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 treat me so good when i live here yeah that if i can reciprocate and keep that karmic circle turning man <laughs> then i will yeah to a point i wouldn't want a dentist to be asking it wasn't the dentist it was the tip. assistant at the door That's... like greeting me at the door i wouldn't want to i wouldn't go i wouldn't be tipping them no no, no. i didn't either i thought that was like, uh, like I, I didn't know what to say. Cause yeah, I, that's, I like, that's bizarre. <laughs> yeah, I was so, like, this is a professional. I yeah. don't know, man. Yeah. That was that was a strange thing. Maybe yeah. that was a one-off. But um, tipping culture in general is always difficult in different locations, right? So, yeah. so here you're saying you can tip if you want. Yeah. Some places expect it and put it on the bill. Up to you based yeah. on the service. Yeah, if they put it on the bill, it's not up to you. And then I just don't I consider that enough. Taxis, if they use the meter, I'll tip them. If they don't use the meter and we have to negotiate a price, yeah. I won't. Yeah, I was going to touch on that. Um, yeah, so what do you prefer? Do you prefer to use the meter? Or do you oh, prefer God, to yeah. negotiate? Yeah. Oh, I think it's always way cheaper. The meters, <laughs> like they need to find, and that's, it's almost like a version of dual pricing, I will say for taxis, but I get it. The meter's so cheap. It's like, how can this guy make money? Yeah. Um, but the Thai's got to be able to afford the, 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 the locals have to be able to afford the cabs too. Yeah. Um, and so no meters hundred, when they put on a meter, it's, it's going to be cheap. You know, yeah. you know that yeah. meters the way to go. Yeah. 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 What about, uh, I want to, I want to end the episode with, with like one question and then if you have something to plug, go ahead. But when it comes to the local population, how they are as a people, like, are they easy to get along with? Are they easy to, to befriend? Or do, what would you describe the Thai people like? What are they like? It, everybody's different, of course, but like as a, as a general statement, what would you say about the Thai people? Uh, they're, they're the warmest group of people, is, uh, exceptions to every rule. But they're the warmest group of people that I've ever encountered on earth. The most um, easy going. They say, sabai, sabai, man. <laughs> sabai, sabai. <laughs> Which for some people that could frustrate. Yes. <laughs> because that means maybe your restaurant order takes a little longer than you'd <laughs> expect. And they don't seem to be stressing or apologizing for it. They're just, they're yeah. just living in the present, man. Um, I absolutely adore the Thai people and I've I mean it's there's there's very few people I've met that wouldn't cite the Thai people as one of the main reasons why we um, feel at home here yeah you know I got some really good Thai friends from all walks of life you know the a big misnomer about Thais and and even the way I've been talking the locals have to be able to afford this or that you go to the shopping malls, the Louis Vuitton stores aren't full of foreigners, they're full of Thais. Yeah. Like there's, there's all classes of Thais from the ultra rich that make the rich people in Canada look like nothing to the, to the struggling laborer, you know, and everything in between. Yep. And so I've got a lot of great friends, Thai friends. I, I love them to death, man. They, they, they make you feel welcome in their country when you're and look how many people they welcome into their country and they're still, this is why I say I don't want Thailand to go changing. Yeah. Mostly the people, like there's so many of us here. Europe, everyone's st over tourism's a dirty word now. Mm. Spanish want them out. Italy wants to control it. You know, Japan's blocking views to Mount F Fuji. Yeah. Like uh, Thailand somehow wants to hang out, have a smile. They don't hassle you. Yeah. You know, the Caribbean, you go to the Caribbean, it's like, man, you want money just because we're hanging out? I yeah. thought I was making a local friend because I'm used to Thailand. Yeah. And then, oh, wait, this is transactional? Yeah. In Thailand, if once you're here for a bit and you get th past the tourist mindset, it's easy to make Thai friends yeah. who are genuine. Yeah. I like Thailand a lot. I keep coming back here over and over and over again for yeah. a good reason. Yeah. And uh, I'm thinking of setting up shop here. 
Um, Welcome. Well, yeah, you might see me. I did in the that streets. for 20 straight years. Yeah. And always was said one day, one day, one day, and then did it and uh, took the leap and now think this is it. I, as long as this place doesn't change, I'll be here till I'm dead. Let's uh, shut down the episode by you telling everybody, if, is there anything that you want to plug? Obviously, your channel, YouTube channel, the, the two of them. There's two of them. There, I follow them Yeah, both. all about Thailand. If you're interested in Thailand, my, yeah, the YouTube channel, Retired yeah. Working For You. And then uh, if you do think about moving here, ThaiLanguageChallenge.com. Me and my Thai friend, she's the teacher, my nephew put this online Thai language course together. Yeah, I've seen that. That is uh, awesome. People are loving it. There's like right now 280 people already in it. It, wow, ju it just launched in January and they're loving it because because of the teacher. She's awesome. So check it out, thailanguagechallenge.com. Awesome. It's fun, man. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you, Chris, for coming. Yeah, thanks. And this good luck, good. man. Thanks yeah, this was much. good chatting with you. Yeah, maybe we'll see each other in uh, Koh Samui. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, man. Okay. Laters. All right, thanks guys.